Let's welcome in our co-hosts on this uh, beautiful Thursday. He is the New York Times best-selling author because they don't chart the worst selling ones. John Gilstrap. Good morning, John. Good morning. Yet again, we should be able to put what goes on before we go on the air on the air. That's the best. It's it's the best show. <laughs> the people miss the best show. Is, uh, there's a lot going on here. Yeah. There's there's a lot that goes on in between the commercial breaks here. If there was a Mount Rushmore of co-hosts, John Gilstrap would be on it. Not because of anything he's achieved, just because he sits so high yeah. up. You so I look can up. see you over <laughs> you all gotta, the computer equipment. Yeah, anyway. so. It's like flying a jet in here sometimes. It used to be all I would see was your eyes. Now I can Which I many say higher, is the best part of me. Well, just, you know, just looking right into my I'm eyes. I'm just going to let that go. I just let that go. <laughs> what? Let's, uh... <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. Welcome in. You be power. You be quiet over there for a minute. Let's welcome in Jefferson <laughs> County Prosecuting Attorney Matt Harvey. Good morning, Matthew. Good morning. Good morning. Congratulations on your re-election yesterday. Were you nervous Thank election you. night? I was. Yes, of course. Unopposed. Unopposed. Who, who, had you lost, it would have been very embarrassing. <laughs> it, would have been, it would have been odd. <laughs> Unopposed was a popular candidate in West Virginia. There were a few races in which he or she appeared on the ballot. It was uh, including for treasurer. Well, not not it. Well, you know, remember my frame of reference is Jefferson County, and I think every those were opposed. A lot of those were opposed. We had four commission commission races on the ballot, and they those were opposed, and all the candidates and and those were very active and working hard. So you know, it didn't feel like a lot of open seats to me. The treasurer's race in the state was unopposed. That's just unfathomable. That you won't have an opponent for someone in the state office. Of course, considering that those who did run, the margin was about 70 to 30 percent. So I can understand why you might not want to go through that kind of humiliation. But still, you got to put a person forward if you're a major party. Goodness gracious. Unopposed for treasurer in the state? Well, I think his reputation preceded him. Well, must have because there was nobody that wanted that uh, that job apparently on the other side. Oh, and there was a Berkeley County surveyor, is it that just had no candidate at all? That I can understand. This, I mean, no candidate one, at all. I'm talking about the treasurer of the I, state I of West Virginia, right? The treasurer. It's a it's a it's a top office. It's one of the big ones. Yes, it's on the board of public works, yeah. and they have a tremendous amount of influence and power in West Virginia. All all those board of public works. They do. Hey, the Martinsburg Veterans Day Parade is this Saturday. It's kind of gotten lost in all of the uh, election uh, talk, but it is this Saturday. The lineup starts at 10 at the Berkeley County Judicial Center, and the parade itself begins at 11. If you want to be a part of this, you have to get in touch with Kathleen Stotler, 620-7786. Please do that. Following the parade, there will be a reception for all veterans and parade participants at uh, the Martinsburg VFW on North Queen Street. That's 241 North Queen Street. So please take advantage of that, and I uh, hope the weather stays nice for that. Let's welcome in our guests in this first segment. We like them so much, we're going to keep them a full hour. They are the president and vice president of the Berkeley County Board of Education, Jackie Long. Good morning, Jackie. Good morning. And Melissa Power, vice president. <laughs> you are shaking over there. <laughs> I'm just waiting. For, I'm waiting for the other shoe to drop. <laughs> You've got great intros yeah. for two of your co-hosts, mm -hmm. but then you get to us, and I'm sitting there going, "I'm waiting. I'm waiting for it because I don't know what's going to come out of your mouth." Well, we never do. So <laughs> I don't. Is that why you brought all those cookies to keep? No, your mouth? <laughs> I didn't bring any of those. Those are those are Jackie's. It doesn't help. That, that's doesn't that, help. that's Jackie's way of saying I love you. So please be nice to me. Or Jackie's oh. husband's way of saying it. Yeah, and right. and, and, I, and that doesn't influence the niceness here. No, it doesn't. You don't think? No, no. Because that's not really. the we when we get a candidate, somebody who's running for office for the first time, and they know somebody who has run, they always tell them bring in food. They, no take one told me that. they take it easy on you. They take it easy on you. They, no one told me that. <laughs> so, what's that tell you? Yeah. Well, it means I didn't know a lot. <laughs> now you know. And now right? I know. Ritz crackers, fudge covered crackers. This is a limited edition, so you know it's valuable. Also, we've got muffins. <laughs> yeah, don't open it. Now, well, these are. These, it looks like there's a little bit of a sugar glaze on top of those. Need a little bit of sugar in I there. I got Rob. scolded for taking the label off. Oh well, I hope you learned your lesson. Yeah, I did. And uh, cookies. <laughs> Who there? scolded you? Frosted Rob? sugar cookies. No, no, not Rob. My ex, Ron. Ron, Ron Long scolded. Th thank you, Ron, and thank you, uh, Jackie, for being the transport. Yeah. Very nice. So, Melissa, how you been? Good. How are you? Great. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Well, thanks for coming yeah. in. Yeah. We always appreciate it, even if we never know what's going to be thrown at us. But yeah. I think we do very well at 
either skirting the issue or, <laughs> <laughs> or discussing correct. the topic. Well, uh, you know, I have to give you guys credit because this board has continued the transparency that uh, the previous board, when Pat was the president, uh, mm -hmm. had established. Prior to that, it was very difficult to get any board members. Todd Beckwith would do it occasionally, but otherwise it was pretty difficult to get board members to come on the show and talk about Board of Education business. The philosophy was, well, we hire a superintendent. That's the person that should be the one answering all the questions, which is fine. But it's an elected position, and if it's an elected position, and it's, it's a paid elected position, even though it's a very small amount of pay, and the taxpayers pay that, I think the board members should also be public with how they feel on things. Well, well I, I, excuse me. Go ahead. <laughs> I always polite. feel like that, I, you know, I ran for a reason, and I have mm -hmm. nothing to hide, and I represent ev everyone, mm -hmm. even though I, you have to run in a district. Right. Um, uh, um, we're an open book, and I, and I really applaud Mr. Murphy for the changes that he made with the board mm -hmm. and how we operate together as a team. And it's not just the president; it's all of us. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they have no problem bashing me around or bashing. Um, Nobody's that, bashing. No, you. no, they don't bash me. They tease we have me pillows. terribly. It's fine. They pick on me a lot. Pillow fights. That's all it is. Just yeah. That fights. was the change he made in the board was yeah. to <laughs> <enable> <laughs> the picking of you. No, we get our long extremely well. Yeah, so my we monthly do. pillow we fights. We do. Yeah. Well, I mean, here's the thing. You know, the people in Berkeley County elected us, mm -hmm. um, and they were they hired us to do a job, just like we, you know, collectively the five of us hired a superintendent to do a job so you know um if we're expecting the superintendent to provide us information i would expect that those who elected us would you know want information and mm -hmm. we try to do as best we can to provide the information that we're able to um some things obviously are are um confidential, uh, confidential and and hard to um disclose um especially when when there are you know um news news breaking and you know wanting to get as much information as quickly as possible the only problem with that is we do have hr laws we mm -hmm. have um uh, um, we have code that we have to abide by so there's there's a few different things that could keep us from um being as transparent as we would really ideally i think want to be and you're the perfect person to ask about this because when you ran you mm -hmm. ran wanting more transparency yeah. and then as soon as you get elected there's a hack uh, <laughs> ransomware and you guys can't say anything can't say anything right so what what did candidate melissa power not know that board member melissa power now knows oh geez i mean i could write a book i mean how long was your book that you recently wrote how many pages it was a hundred and nine thousand words a hundred and nine thousand words pages. okay you're the, did I, you hear the snobbery I, in that response I, I, okay. pages, you know. <laughs> melissa did you did you catch the snobbery I'm catching, the I'm condescension doing, yes that means nothing to us it means yeah it means nothing so another I do words. words i don't do pages <laughs> I'm a New York Times bestselling <laughs> author. I don't do pages. I do words. Can you talk to me instead of down to me? No, I'm thinking that cannot. chair keeps getting higher and higher and you keep talking down. You need, when no, you do his intro, you need to uh, <laughs> announce the best New York bestseller. New York Times bestseller. By pages. And then by, by words. Uh, with uh, 119,000 words. Yes. Jackie, 190,000 Oh, 190,000. Please, please. 109. Oh, Jesus. I don't want to diminish the... Uh, she's trying to avoid... Wait, answering right. your question. <laughs> this, is, this is how you... No. And you didn't I, even bring food. You're alienating the host, and you didn't even bring food. What are you thinking? Uh, this is... Yeah, that's a black The door's bar. right over here, right? <laughs> so it's locked from the now, outside. Um, Those chairs have wheels on them. They do. Yeah. Um, I, think, I think the part that I didn't necessarily understand when I first ran was how in-depth the HR and the code really comes into play with some of the information that the board is aware of, but then can't necessarily always dispense immediately to the people. When we had the hack, we, of course, knew that it was a hack, but we couldn't say that it was a hack at the time. Um, we had received guidance. We don't get hacked every day, sure. <laughs> thank God. Um, so we're, we had to rely on those who, 
who helped other organizations and had gone through that process to really help us walk through this. Um, and I, I'm very thankful for, um, you know, the group of individuals that we had at that time and, and still continue to have. We have, you know, Leah Bass and her team that um, worked very, very hard through that whole entire situation. So, um, and continue to work hard. So this is one of those situations where I think we, we asked several times and there were things that they even to keep us from um any uh, potentially accidentally saying certain things i think they kept some stuff from us for a little bit until they had confidence that it could be told to even us just mm -hmm. because there's a security piece to this you have to keep in mind that not only are we trying to keep keep the the school system the the information safe we have to we fiscally we have to be responsible with um with what we've been given and if with a lot of hacks a lot of things that come in there's i mean there's all kinds if you ever go through an it um class there's different phishing attempts and scams and ransoms and all this so they're having to navigate some of that stuff and i think keeping keeping information closer to the to the vest when there's um investigations and stuff especially when you have federal mm -hmm. um people coming in and, and working with us it just you that have to keep things his question. his question was what did i learn and he used the hack as the example i gave yeah. him the example I well what did you learn i learned a lot <laughs> well she learned what we tried to tell her during the well, when she was, when oh, she, wait, was wait, wait, wait. she was candidate, Melissa. Well, wait yeah. a second. Wait a second. There were things that you learned too that I was trying to tell you during the campaign that you learned after. You're shaking Such your a, head. No, I, I, I don't know what that was, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. Do you remember Maybe about you? Hey, no. Do you remember about one of the schools? I'm just going to sit back oh, and have yeah. a cookie. Well, Matt, that you was after cookie? you got a <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I was trying to explain some of that stuff to you during the during the election and that there were issues within a some of our schools that had to do with retaliation or... Um, retaliation of personnel, yeah. on personnel. Because we've yeah. heard that complaint for years in yeah. Berkeley County Schools. Yeah, and unfortunately, you know, it's... It, Is it a valid complaint? No. Now, that, now that you're inside it, the system? It, it depends. It depends. It's a, no, no, I'll say that. Most um, of the time. Most, most, majority most, of the time, mm -hmm. it's not. It depends on the situation and how that employee looks at it it we uh, no one is retaliated against on part and if it is it's taken care of immediately um i mean retaliation is very difficult to prove it is very difficult to prove and i think that that one of the things though that uh, this this one particular school brought, was bringing to the forefront was not just kids behavior but how do we handle this and we're not getting support and we need help um, and and we eventually got there. We eventually got there. Are you satisfied right now, Melissa, that if a teacher complains about something, there wouldn't be retaliation brought to that teacher? It depends on the teacher, the circumstance, and who they're they're reporting to. I can't I can't give you a blanket answer on that one, unfortunately. I, I, I rule of thumb is that I'm confident that they'll be okay, but I'm just would be cautious in answering that as a blanket statement. I, I'm comfortable. I, I think, uh, I mean, if, when all that comes to the forefront, I think um, that issues that like that of that matter are taken care of. And uh, we ensure that we do our best to ensure that no one's retaliated mm -hmm. against. But the employee or whoever it is has to bring it to the forefront. You can't go on rumors. And that's what happens a lot of times. So if I'm if I'm a teacher at school A and there's an issue, I report it mm -hmm. to my principal, right? Correct. And then the principal reports to whom? Is there who? What depends on what the issue is? Well, I, no. If, the, the, if who, who does the principal's performance? Their appraisal? boss, so their, director, their direct, who, who, whoever they're uh, assigned to. You know, whatever the issue is, if it's a pupil services issue, you could go that route. If it's a security issue, you could go that route. I think is it a deputy superintendent who's in charge yes, of the principal? Yeah, yeah. I think is what he's asking. Yeah. So do oh, all yeah. principals work then, for one and person? And then to the deputy superintendent. To the deputy. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah, there's a hierarchy of who goes to who. Okay. Yeah, because yeah. you've got you, you've got some principals that are, you know, the elementary and then the high school. So you've got two totally different directors that would be 
working with those individuals because they're two different schools, two different, two different, you know, um, purpose. Well, but not that's purposes, teaching and but learning. Two different segments. And so that's yeah. a different yeah uh, animal there. If it's a teaching and learning problem, then they would go to those particular. I'm thinking uh, that directors. he's talking about specifically who do they report to, not not necessarily with the problem, but who's doing like maybe their evaluations, who's their boss, who, who yeah. do they get permission if from I'm to a principal, do who, who tells me if I'm doing a good job? Well, it's whoever's evaluating them, but uh, ultimately they're responsible to this uh, deputy su or assistant superintendent of learning and then to the superintendent. Okay. Does that help? I guess. I'm just wondering what the, if there's a, if, the, if there's a systemic kind of, I, I think we need to get here. off of that yeah. because yeah, yeah, there yeah. is no systemic and we'll yeah. have uh, uh, yeah there's not a systemic issue yeah. there is no systemic issue that i am aware of there, i i can say that confidently there is no there is no systemic issue that i am aware of did you suspect one when you ran yes but sus suspecting something like that from a person that why would you go to a candidate instead of coming to i think at the time they did not feel like anybody was listening to them and they had tried um given what i know now i think that that was partially true um and i think that there was so many if you if you have let's no one say came to a, mr murphy and i what and and that i think was because not because uh of you or you or mr murphy i think they had tried so many different avenues they just when you when you hear something to the effect of, well, I talked to the board. Well, <laughs> does that mean everybody on the board of education or does that mean somebody in the central office? What does that mean? And I think when, when we say I talked with, to, to someone at the board, it's, or, or talked to the board, it's a blanket right. statement that, that is made. Um, and it's just a blanket, um, usage. I, I, I don't know that they, didn't or or anything like they didn't feel confident or anything like that. I'm not going to put words in their mouth. I I believe that they probably would have felt comfortable doing that, but I think they were just exhausted. I think you're coming out of COVID. You're coming out of um, you're getting everybody back into the swing of things. You're getting kids back into the school, and they're feeling overlooked, and they're just they're exhausted. So they're going to just talk to anybody that would listen to them. Evidently. That's 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 what Evidently. I think. <laughs> But I think that's what, what happened. And unfortunately, with this particular school, I was alerted to something and I brought it to Jackie and Pat's attention and um, as well as the superintendent at the time. Um, and it we had to have some hard conversations and so that that could get addressed. Well, when you ran, you kind of ran as, for lack of a better way of putting yes. it, kind of the people's champion, so to yes. speak. Uh, for for those who weren't getting a fair shake in the school system, for those yep. who felt they were being retaliated against, you're yep. representing those people. And, and now that you're in, do you feel like you're still that person? Yes. Or do you feel like there wasn't as much of a cause to champion as you thought? No, I, I actually, I'm still, I, I've actually working with a parent right now. Um, well, and, but, but, I, but, and, but to take, we all do we that. All, I was going to say, all do that. I'm, I'm talking just specifically one. because that was really, her campaign was, was that was a big yeah. part of, of Melissa's yeah. campaign. I mean, I, I've talked with, I have teachers. Uh, I have um, a couple of principals. Um, I have um, staff or uh, support staff that have come to me, um, asked questions and sought help. Um, and one of the things I really enjoy about um, Dr. Sachs is that when I present something to him um, or, or he, it's, there's, there's this desire to try and figure out what the root cause is, mm -hmm. get to the bottom of it and let's fix it. Um, and, and I think that some people that might have ne not necessarily um, understood why we made the decision that we did when we did not vote for, or I did not vote for um, Dr. Stevens or Mr. Stevens to get a renewal. Um, I think they under started to understand that afterwards um because they were like i didn't even think he would be the one to reach out or that i would get a follow-up from the board office like i wasn't expecting that whatsoever and i think that was the there was a startled difference between the two i, I think also that the people that reach out to her she has a group that reaches out to her we all have groups we all have yes groups mm -hmm. yeah i mean say for instance yesterday i probably wrote four or five emails, mm -hmm. called p 
uh, people, uh, talked to Dr. Sack several times. Uh, it's an ongoing thing mm -hmm. all day. So, you know, you... Well, I get out of work and I'm immediately either on the phone or I'm responding back to somebody via text or I'm emailing or I'm, you know, calling Dr. Sachs or he's calling me. It, it's, 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 it's a constant. constant. It's a constant. So I. It, and I thank Damon and Michael and. Um, yeah. Pat have the same thing. How, how much authority as an individual uh, school board member do you have to, to make decisions or None. act on your behalf? Well. Or I, act on others' behalf? I'm more of an advocate. Yeah, I'm not. I, I can't make any decisions we can't by make myself. Any decisions, but we do. I mean, we can answer emails, um, and and we usually turn over everything over to the superintendent to yes. make sure that he's aware and um, that we're all on the same page. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I think we do a lot more than probably most boards ever have done as far as connecting with the people in the schools, mm -hmm. connecting with our public. Um, you know, that's important to us. There's, when Melissa talked about transparency, we all want transparency. We have nothing to hide. So, uh, Do you speak with Dr. Sachs more than you would have spoken with previous superintendents? Um, for me, it's uh, the same. Now, um, a ton more. Melissa probably has a different outlook A ton outlook on more. That. I think, I, and I joked about this one, this one particular week. Um, there were there just various things, whether it was um, a parent that was reaching out asking, where do I go for this to get this information or whatever. And, you know, in communicating with Dr. Sachs, it was interesting because I felt like I had talked to Dr. Sachs more than I had my own husband. So, I mean, it's just there's going to be weeks that are like that. So I I did not have that with um, Mr. Stevens. Um, I don't know any other superintendent before that because right. I, I didn't, I was, you know, elected when Mr. Stevens was put in, um, uh, after Dr. Murphy had vacated his position. I, I will say this though, that, uh, Dr. Sachs reaches out to us. Yes. He tells us, he informs us of everything. Uh, there's not anything that we don't know. Is that mostly email communication or is email it call, call? emails and calls, calls and yeah emails and all calls of us, text, all, that. all of it mm -hmm. so when when he communicates with you is it I'm going to inform the president first and let it filter down or all five board members get the same I think it depends on the situation I think he calls me first and then yeah. he calls them that yeah. and that's the way it should be yeah. mm -hmm. just so I know what he's told them or vice versa exactly yeah. Did you feel like the communications breakdown between you and Mr. Stevens had something to do with your vote, or was Mr. Stevens more, I'm going to talk to the president, and then the president can talk to everybody else? I wasn't president then, but uh, I, to me, I think it's because I ha had known him for so many years, mm -hmm. for, you know, for ever since he'd been in the school system. So For me, I believe the breakdown occurred about six months after I had been elected and assumed office. There was a, there was a, a vote that, that I had made during a board meeting or several board meetings that um, I don't know if he understood why I voted the way that I did and it there there seemed to be that seemed to be the place where there was a wedge that started and then it just continued to grow and grow uh, stay where you are we're doing a full hour with uh, Jackie and Melissa from the Board of Education president and vice president of that uh, entity and this segment of our show today brought to you in part by WVU Medicine Berkeley Medical Center Jefferson Medical Center, leading healthcare here and everywhere. Also by the Berkeley County Health Department, where you can get your free rate on test kits today in the Berkeley and Morgan County offices. This is uh, uh, segment one, segment two on the way right after this. This segment of our show today brought to you in part by Farmers and Mechanics Insurance Company. He's got a quote today, FMIWB.com. Also by elder care attorney Danny Staggers in Martinsburg at 304-267-3915. And the Berkeley County Health Department's quick response team. Again, the uh, Martinsburg Veterans Day Parade is this Saturday. The lineup starts at 10 at the Berkeley County Judicial Center on West South Street. The parade begins at 11. If you want to be in the parade, you must be pre-registered. To do that, call Kathleen Stotler at 304-620-7786 or email her at Kathleen Stotler, S-T-O-T-L-E-R, at yahoo.com. Following the parade, there's a reception for all veterans and parade participants 
at the Martinsburg VFW on uh, North Queen Street. In studio with uh, New York Times bestselling author John Gilstrap. Mr. Gilstrap. Good morning. They were making fun of me. I'm feeling aggressed. <laughs> I, I, I want to file a complaint. Jefferson County Prosecuting Attorney Matt Harvey. Matthew. <laughs> Good morning. They passed an education levy in Jefferson County this last vote, too. They did. Well, we approved it, I guess. Well, yes, yes. And it looked like it, it – I, don't, I didn't look up the results, but it passed pretty handily. Good news. More education in Jefferson County. Now, on to Berkeley County where we have the Board of Education members, President Jackie Long – Vice President Melissa Power, who just shakes as soon as I'm ready to introduce her. I don't know what's up with that, but <laughs> bubbling with laughter, I guess. I don't know. You know, one, one thing that people have told me, I, I, should, I don't mean to hurt your feelings, but uh -oh. I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> when someone says that, you know your feelings are getting hurt. They said, Jackie, you need to talk more. I said, well, uh, they said, Melissa says, does all the talking. I said, well, you can't get a word in. I mean, you got to. <laughs> you shouldn't have said that. There goes the microphone. Stereo. Well, this you is, got the headphones on. That won't help me. This is perfect now because this leads us to the next question, no, which you. deals hey, with hey. the situation at Spring Mills High School. <laughs> How was that perfect? This is a perfect transition oh, because, that's not a perfect because transition. She, was, she was giving you both microphones, oh, yes. so you were out of the loop oh, yes. to go right to the president here. Oh, I don't want that. So our guys on the sports mix, I don't want that microphone getting out of here. <laughs> our guys on the sports mix, and I bring up Colin McLaughlin here too out of our newsroom, did an interview with the president of the WV or the director of the WVSSAC. And Colin, correct me if I'm wrong, but that person uh, whose name escapes me at the moment stated that the responsibility for verifying the eligibility of each student athlete starts with the principal of the school. Is that correct? I believe that is correct, and that was David Price, who is the current uh, executive director of the WVSSAC. Very good. Now, uh, Colin, give us the 30-second uh, snapshot of the issue at Spring Mills High School. A uh, 30-second snapshot is that throughout the season, they discovered that during four games uh, through week three to week six, they had used a an eligible player during uh, the games on, I believe, just special teams and uh, at counts as basically a full quarter, even if it's one play. So they self-reported the ineligible player to the WVSS AC, and uh, it was announced earlier this week that they had to forfeit those four games uh, due to the ineligible player spring mills record before the forfeits was eight and one and they had given up 23 points all season defensively they only lost to martinsburg by five which is martinsburg the number one team spring mills then fell to number 10 colin and their record uh, then was changed to four and five correct correct and as far as the ssac is concerned one play one stepping on the field for an official play is considered uh, an entire quarter, therefore, that makes uh, that player ineligible and, and the team now responsible for that ineligible player being on the field, correct? Correct. A player dressed and on the sideline who does not participate is not counted as a violation, correct? I believe that is correct, I yes. I thought what Mr. Price said during the interview. All right, so the question, Jackie and Melissa, is, is Mr. Price correct? It's the responsibility of the principal of the school to verify eligibility of a player. Does it start there or does it go to the AD? Uh, it's my understanding that it starts there and then it goes to the AD. That's all I know about it. And we don't have much knowledge of the situation except what um, Colin just said. Melissa, any comment on that? I, Jackie actually said it perfectly. I, I'd love to be able to have more information myself, but you guys have as much as, much as we do. What makes, <coughs> excuse me, what, what makes a player ineligible? In this particular case, Colin, I think it was residency? Yes. Uh, <coughs> apparently, the enrollment process, uh, there was a uh, unfactual, um, I guess what word I'm looking for is throughout the process of uh, enrollment, they lied about residency, and that made the player ineligible uh, in this instance. Usually, you'll look and the first thing you think of are grades when a player is deemed ineligible, but this is uh, due to, yes. So no he was sparingly proper used? residency. Correct. So it wasn't to gain any sort of advantage? Correct. And somebody, some administrator made a mistake and hurt, really hurt these kids on this team? That's the issue. 
Yeah. And so the, the question then is, in the era of open transfers, does anybody know why residency matters? If you can go to any school you want to go to, does it matter where you live? Well, I, I don't think it's just like the NIL or, or how it is in college football. There are still some restrictions. There are limits to how many times a kid can transfer, isn't there? Uh, and I also think you have to live with your guardian. You have to live with a parent. You can't just live with a cousin or... Or say you do. Or say you do. Well, it was clearly a law that was on the books, and it was violated, yeah. mm -hmm. and it was a clear penalty, and it was enforced. And these kids are, are suffering for someone else's mistake. Yeah, which, which is the, the greater issue that I have with any of these decisions is you put responsibilities in the hands of adults, but you punish the children, which... Right. would seem to me a bit top-heavy now well it's, that's it, also it, it, describes it, bad parenting right well yeah but here you got i don't know how many kids are on the spring mills football team let's pick a number of 40 all right so what did they have to do with the mistake of someone above them in administration who gets paid to verify these things yeah. now these are complex situations and i don't know what the process is for verifying somebody's address do you they should Jackie, fire they should Melissa? fire the adult that messed up and let the kids have their wins right no. whoa, 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 whoa. i don't want to i don't want to i don't know about getting into that just yet <laughs> mr harvey the prosecutor <laughs> well, attorney I, again i just I, this, we're punishing the kids i and, agree and i don't i don't disagree with enforcing the law and i don't have a problem with that i have a problem with someone you know allowing this to happen if but, you're using an eligible player that, because, you know, sports ball is my life, so I know yeah. all of these rules. Uh, if you're using an ineligible player, that is a form of cheating. Well, right? but let me just point out, the coach did not know the player was ineligible. Nobody knew the player okay. was ineligible until an right. examination of records further discovered. And once they found out, they self-reported the mistake. Okay, okay. well, then I'm a little harsh. This wasn't somebody trying to hide I a kid understand. who didn't belong to <clears throat> but, but the root of it is they played an ineligible player. Whether, Correct. For, yes. Okay. So, any punishment... That, that goes from that by definition has to i mean what else is there but to to punish the you're not punishing the other kids you're punishing the the coach's record which then inures to the kids i mean if, well, if the coach had designed a cheating play whatever that would be and you would that would also punish the kids you are punishing the kids because instead of having home playoff games, in which case Spring Mills would have been in position for three, you now will be playing road playoff games, most likely, unless there are upsets. And this is not an easy state to travel to on a Friday or a Saturday for so a they, game. They have one more game left. Mm -hmm. So it's conceivable they could. Well, they, 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 they could be thankfully, five they make five. The, the playoffs, right? Everyone and, in Quad and, A makes the playoffs. And they could advance their positioning. Correct. Theoretically, but it won't be a whole but, lot, I would think. They're not going to be the number two ranked team. I'm, I'm going to actually throw a flag on this conversation. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like, I, and correct me if I'm wrong, um, Jackie, I feel as though um, because we are there, there's a in-depth conversation amongst Board the three members. of you, mm -hmm. it does. We, we are here and sitting. Um, I'm actually going to ask if we can change subjects because if, sure. for, if for whatever reason this particular topic comes before the board um, of education where we have to sit in on some level of hearing, mm -hmm. I do not want to say that I have gained any facts or gained any information outside of what I would be gaining from that particular hearing and there is no influence in my understanding from um, facts that could very well not be presented to us so i just want to make sure that we are we are good that if we ever have to sit before a hearing we can You're not justifiably say yeah. that we are not compromised in has, it, do you know if there is an investigation inside berkeley county schools as to this and if anybody has been terminated over it i don't know of any termination at this time every case like this is investigated so um and, and i don't think anything that has said here now is anything that the public doesn't already know correct i just, just don't want to participate but i don't, want, I know, yeah. I don't want to participate but I don't wanna be part of uh, because melissa's right um we don't know where mm -hmm. anything is headed so a, any rumors of somebody being terminated over this or some, something you're not aware of i am not aware of it no correct. when that has to come before the board is, is it the job of the principal or the athletic director to verify addresses 
for a player. Do you know what the process or procedure correct answer for that I, is? I do not know what the process for that is. I would imagine that it that if it was tasked to the school specifically, that the principal would, would be the one that would either do it or dictate who does it. To what extent that looks like and, and accountability, I don't know. And I know I'm not going to go into any further. And it's my understanding that um, it was you know, it goes to the principal and then the principal dictates it to whom they feel is responsible for that duty. Typically the athletic director? I would think. All That's right. just my thinking. I don't know any. Um, Let's move that's on. That's all I know about that. Let's move on. Yes. And I want to go to the announcement that came out this week about uh, free meals in Berkeley mm -hmm. County to 100% of the students. Yep. Yes. Now, correct? Can you yeah. give us more detail on that, Jackie and or Melissa? Well, was that me? No, that was uh, Colin um, setting his mic down. Oh, there. Um, <laughs> I heard that too. I thought it was me. Now, previously we had 17 schools that were on free lunch. And now every school will be on free lunch, and all students will get that if they deem necessary. And it, it comes at a pretty hefty cost, but um, we feel it's worth it. And... Um, it's exciting news for our parents. What is that hefty cost? Anywhere from we have a deficit, a debt of six hundred thousand uh, over the past several years that have not been paid. So if you add that to this cost of about seven hundred thousand to seven fifty thousand, seven hundred fifty thousand, it it's over way over a million dollars. So. So if you already have a debt, why add to the debt? Because this will actually stop the debt from adding up, technically. So Help me out on that. Okay, one. so yeah, so when... Oh, I think I understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so when you, know, you continue to accrue debt because... Um, it's free. Because parents are not able to afford, or parents or guardians are not able to afford to, to supply that money, um, then we continue to build that debt up over and over and over, it'll keep accruing versus if we are um, assuming that debt and then can supply um, proof of that over, and correct me if I'm wrong, Jackie, um, to, um, with the federal government, we have the ability to leverage some of it back. So um, the debt reversed. is specific to the lunch cost is what you're talking yes, about. I correct. thought you meant a school debt overall. No, no, yeah. no. This yeah. is specific to to lunch, lunch costs. Meals. Yeah, lunch meals, the cost that Got if it. a if a if a child comes in and says I'm hungry, I have no lunch with me and I have no money with me, um we provide them food. Sure. Because that's a it's a need. It's a need. It's a necessity for Absolutely. that for that student. So we provide them food. Um we do let parents know that there's, you know, there there's now a a a debt, if you will, um, something that's owed. Um, but I, if you don't have the money, if a parent is sitting there going, I don't have the money because I got to decide myself between that extra loaf of bread or electric, um, you know, have enough money for the electric bill, mm -hmm. you know, whatever what? that, that no is. Child, What's... No child's denied a lunch. Well, and, correct. And with this, it will help us because we don't continually have to send out lunch bills. Correct. And we're not continually harassing parents and i i say that loosely but you know it, so nothing's now, going to collections was there, was there a penalty for non-payment by the student late uh, fees and whatever uh there was no late fees or anything mm -hmm. but eventually they went to collections yeah and, and which is hard to so get. now children who okay. are from families of means don't pay either no 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 one pays no one pays and and all the there were only two counties across the state that were not in totally free or reduced lunch and that was berkeley and i can't remember what the other one was i don't remember which one it is either it was a smaller county and so, is it is it the same is there a, a spread of what the kids can eat is it is it one choice for a meal or do you have the 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 meal mom and dad would like you to eat and then pizza no i mean it's the the menu hasn't changed okay nothing's changed no, nothing's changed it's, it's just the, the same meal it's just all I mean, uh, the meals and the other 17 schools for the, that were um, already on free or reduced or, uh, or free lunch were no different than the other schools that weren't on. Um, and our schools are really good about figuring out, like, you know, if they know that there's, let's say, 100 kids in a school and this is by far not 
hard numbers mm-hmm. on any on any level. Um, if there's 100 kids in a school and they know that 50 kids always get lunch, they're going to make sure that they've got enough meals for 50. And if they start to see 51, 52, 53, you know, kids coming through their line, they're going to they're, they will subsequently, you know, start to supplement what they what they do need for that particular day it, or that. And lunch. most schools, except the high schools, I think it'd be more difficult with always had a lunch count that went down to the kitchen. Yes. So yes. it's like this cooks knew how much more or less how much food Correct. to prepare it, now high schools i think that would be very difficult so it, what is there an administrative savings as well with not sending out bills or is it negligible well, yeah. or is it well because yeah. there is Did what you save a salary of someone and you could put somewhere else i would think i mean i think we, at the end of the we day need, we will but i don't know that it's we're going to realize that's not that i thought of that's not something we thought of but i don't know that we're going to realize that right now because we're partway through a year um, I don't know that we're going to necessarily realize it until probably next, next year. year. Um, and actually, this is just a pilot. If after that year we don't want to do that anymore, we can elect, we can, to we can elect not to. But that wasn't in our thinking when we. So, what we, is the budget of Berkeley County Schools? Uh, two hundred and forty-nine million. Uh, I was going to say Something it's right it's like around two fifty. It's yeah. around two fifty, two hundred fifty million dollars a year, and mm-hmm. this is going to just this is six hundred thousand dollars. No, it's one over oh, a million. One, it, it, for our this, debt it be a, is six hundred. I understand. Okay, and yes, it you're cumul- right. So, it cumulates so about this is just the as cost. A, uh, the cost yeah. is a million dollars. Yeah. Okay. Or uh, between seven hundred, the cost is right now seven hundred thousand to seven hundred fifty thousand. But if if you add the debt on to it to it, it increases that. That's just well, for, is, but this is is, re- the, is that the true cost? Though. Is that the true cost of the food though per per meal? What's charged, or is it no, that's slightly what, higher, that, slightly lower? That's what. Um, you mean the six hundred thousand? Yeah, if if it's, it's a, a do, if it's if it's two fifty for lunch or whatever it is, is that the true cost of the the meal? Oh or? no, it costs mm-hmm. our food costs are much the, the, food, the food cost. You're, yeah. you're yeah, we got to keep. There's no in, way you can yeah, yeah. provide a. Well, I, I don't higher. know what I don't it's know what higher. it costs to eat lunch in schools. It's been a while since I've done that. <laughs> I used to eat two of them by the way when either, I was in school. Actually, Getting hungry. I remember it was like sixty-five cents. I loved it. I loved high school. I loved eating at school. I just, it was great. <laughs> but, but you get if you got the corner piece of pizza with two crusts, double crusts. Oh man, that, that was, was a good day. day. Yeah. Yes, it was. Yeah, the yeah. macaroni and cheese. And, you know, it, it fattened me right up. So. Oh, I can see. Yeah. <laughs> Well, at that time it did. I was really a big person. So, oh. so in in regards to how this works with the federal government, mm-hmm. then by having all of the kids mm-hmm. on the free lunch, it mm-hmm. opens you to more federal funds reimbursement. Reimbursement, yes. Now that seems too easy. Well, we're already to have having been done. Well, not necessarily. Are there strings attached from the federal government? We does have to this? abide by the by the yeah. nutrition guidelines, which we have to do anyway. Yeah. So, so there's no different strings attached. Um, they just have different seasons. I will say, I think they have different seasons when you can elect to join or yeah. not join. Yeah. And we were in that season, and we got presented the opportunity, and we said, because well, that's my see. question. If if it would have been easier all along and more cost effective for the schools to just mm-hmm. years ago said 100 percent free lunch because of, because of that we get better well, federal part reimbursement. Well, part of before. this goes back to two, 2010 or 20, 2009 when or somewhere back in back when. Um, uh, Mr. or um, President Obama was in office, and there was a nutrition act that that was passed, mm-hmm. um, where there was some, I, I believe, some subsidies and and uh, reimbursements for these types of things built into it. And this is where that program comes from or out of, and that is where we're able to do some of this. I I can't speak to what other board boards before us did or did not do or elect to do i just know what we were presented recently and Mm -hmm. you know especially with you know inflation the way that it is and um a lot of people who are who are desperately in need of just that little bit of assistance to get one less bill in the mail because your child ate i mean so so what what happens to what happens to the people who are currently in collection or owe money does that that immediately get wiped out clean yeah Plus, the reimbursement we get from the government no way covers. No, it does not. Our lunches at all. 
It's just it's a partial portion. reimbursement. It's a portion of a reimbursement. So does your budget then have to increase to absorb the additional cost, or is it a wash with your reimbursement? No, of course our own budget will increase because of the. It will. That was kind of like a John was, Gilstrap tone you just gave yeah. me about pages versus words. <laughs> Heavens. Like, well, listen, Rob, you idiot. And this year. Uh, <laughs> Like Melissa said, we had if we were going to participate in this, we had to do it by December 31st mm -hmm. or wait until next year. So, you know, this year's we're just doing it for these few months. And then uh, what happens to the meals that aren't eaten? Well, the chef, that was the, a concern the, the to me make. because mm -hmm. uh, waste is a big concern to me. Mm -hmm. And so we're we're going to have and I think some schools already do this now. Uh, it's called a wait. Uh, uh, a waste table or uh, you know things that can be put on that table that any child wants to pick up uh, they can do things like that with the extra food but that's always a concern to me if, the you, waste. if you have a hundred leftover pieces of, of nuggets does it get thrown away or do you take it to the rescue mission or does it get repurposed as some farmer stew yeah, tomorrow well, or something? Or and what? I think uh, we have to be very careful when we're doing things like that so that I, I can't answer but, uh, but you, you don't know or you can't answer no I, I don't know okay um, I know used to be it was a lot different, but things are more. Rob's um, going to be hanging out at school at like 1230. Well, chicken nuggets are tasty. <laughs> well, yeah. and, 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 and actually, cooks don't prepare 100 meals extra. Um, mm -hmm. You know, they prepare closely to what the meal count is for that day. Um, and those like don't, I said, those don't fluctuate schools, too much. No, they don't fluctuate too mm -hmm. much. And in, in high schools, I think that would probably be the. But if it's I, free lunch now, yeah. wouldn't a lot of kids who brown bag it uh, just suddenly take free lunches? No, well, they absolutely could. But then they you're could. also talking about a, a school count. Like you're, we're, you know, at the beginning of the day when the teachers, you know, working with the kids, they're we're getting Still an understanding of how many in the classroom. Oh, it's, is it's be. daily. It's that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. it's daily. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to find the menu online, and I can't. It doesn't really matter. But the, well, I can I, tell you. There was an issue back in 2008, 2009, mm -hmm. when, when this first passed, mm -hmm. that uh, where I used to live, um, the local news agencies were tracking the amount of waste, not in terms of over that they made too many meals. It was the the nutrition guidelines mm -hmm. required stuff that kids refused to eat. Mm -hmm. So while all this nutritious food was being made, the kids were doing the cobbler, and then all the green mm -hmm. stuff was being tossed in the trash. Mm -hmm. I don't remember, I didn't have a dog in the fight, as it were, at, at that time, so I don't remember what the resolution of that was, which is why I asked the question about what what kinds of, you know, what, what's on the menu. Is well, it, is it kid-friendly food or well, like here, nuggets and stuff? Some of it's kid-friendly food, but... Here's uh, the menu today, Jeff. It depends Jack. on okay. what the child... Chicken drums, this is for, uh, just click on any school, this is Back Creek Valley. Chicken... Okay. Drumsticks, scalloped potatoes, baked beans, cornbread, mini uh, loaf, uh, sliced apples, and milk. That's the Berkeley County Schools good. lunch Sounds menu pretty, for yeah. today. Yeah. Sounds good, right? Yeah. Yeah. For, and I don't know what that costs every day, but that sounds that's like what's on the menu today. That's what's on the menu today. So. And is that at every school? The same menu at every it's school? Supposed to be. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think it, I think it varies a little bit. Uh, it's nuanced for the different levels of school. I don't think the high school kids yeah, the high get the school same school thing as the elementary school kids. They serve something different. And, and the middle and high schools have like a salad bar and those kinds of things that. Um, do you still have Fish Fridays? Is that still a thing? No. No? Okay. They have Pizza Fridays, though. I just want to acknowledge that I've kept my mouth shut for several minutes here. Yes. And I've let Jack <laughs> And you had to say all something. Of the questions. Yes, I <laughs> had to. She, because she the music to. started. I had to say something just to make people think I'm still here. That's oh, good. They know, they know you're here. <laughs> <laughs> Jackie, she's always throwing she a left She is jack. on it. She is. Well, you know, by the time I, by the time she finishes her sentence, I've lost my total train of thought. Because it goes on 15 minutes <laughs> it's the top I of the hour i could write a book for what i know no but not, remember not, not words. words no 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 words not, not, not words. purse counts uh, not pictures words. this is talk radio <laughs> wrr martinsburg and tv 10 <laughs> <Mr. Kitchen. laughs>